everybody. Welcome back to the Bitch and Brainstorm podcast. I'm here with Grace Fortune, who is going to be one of our panelists for the Elevate Your Coaching Summit, Elevate Your Coaching Business Summit, happening on January 17th, 2024, from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific time. And I am so excited. So Grace is also a Friends fan. We've been chatting about all of the Friends things. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we're, we're going to vibe really, really good. We love Friends and we love launching. So yeah. <laughs> Um, Grace, can you introduce yourself for the people that don't yet know you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, first, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm Grace Fortune. I'm a launch strategist and a copywriter. Um, I live near Niagara Falls, Ontario. I'm on the Canadian side of the border. And yeah, I love launching. I am a fellow Friends fan, you know, coffee aficionado. Uh, I love Harry Potter. I love reading. I love writing. Um, I, yeah, anything nerdy and dorky, I probably am into it. And I'm a total 90s kid. So friends and yeah, I'm, that's like right up my alley. Yeah, 90. Yep. So, um, so are you Gen X? What, what generation are you? Um, technically millennial. Um, I'm going to be 40 next year. Don't tell anybody, but um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just like on the, I, I guess you're I'm on the borderline, yeah. you're borderline, like a couple year borderline. Cause my brother uh, is like uh was born in 78 and so he's like borderline millennial gen x yeah i'm 80 i'm 84 so i'm kind of on the cusp too yeah yeah i love it i love it love it love it love it so can you tell me what are some of the biggest mistakes that you think business owners make when it comes to launching yeah absolutely so the number one biggest thing that comes to my mind is people launch without making an actual plan first Mm -hmm. they they tend to just think they have this like amazing idea with a ton of potential and they just go whole hog into it without making a plan first yeah and then usually one of two things happen they either over they they start over planning to death and doing and just getting way too deep into it and then they end up getting frozen or they go in the other direction where they like they don't plan at all and then it's just a disaster because they didn't have anything set out ahead of time and then they're just winging it. And then the whole launch is just stressful and just painful to go through. Mm. So that's one big mistake. Um, number two is I would say that they did not vet their offer before they started creating it. I'm I'm a big fan. I'll, I'll get into this a little bit later with some of the questions that you'll probably ask me, but I'm a very big fan of beta testing an offer first before you go live with it. Yes. Um, number three Number three, I would say, is not getting the right help that you need. So um, a lot of, especially when people are launching, like for the first couple of times, they tend to want to try to do everything themselves. And then they realize that, um, I hope I'm allowed to swear, but then they realize it's a shit show and that launching is actually not easy to do on your own, especially if that's not your area of expertise. Yeah. Like if I'm, you know, if I'm like a, let's, let's say I'm an interior decorator who wants to teach other interior decorators. I don't necessarily, that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, your way around like a, like launch technology, like Kajabi or teachable or whatever. Yeah. So there's a lot of things you don't know. So I don't, I would never recommend that somebody just try to wing it and do it, do it themselves. Yeah. And FYI, I'm for hire if anybody needs help with that, because that's what I do. (laughs) All the back end stuff like that is where. Like I love to make sure that, and you've probably noticed how very well organized everything is with this summit. And that's because I have a really great CRM and I have all of the systems in place to do all of the things that I want it to do. It helps keep me sane. And it also helps other people go, wow, that was so easy, right? I want to make it easy for people. And so, yeah, that's, that's totally my jam. I did notice that. Right. Right. It's not by, it's not by accident. (laughs) It is not by accident. I can not. Yeah. So can you talk about, um, so let's say we launch. Okay. We're in the middle of a launch and things are not working well. Email's not converting. Like nothing is working. You're not getting people registered. Like nobody's buying. What do we do? Yeah. So, um, I would say, first of all, like if you're, if you're in the middle of a launch and your emails are not converting, um, I, I personally would think that maybe like, is it possible that it could be a mindset thing? Mm. So in particular, if it's your first set of launch emails, you might not actually realize that you're, you're on, you're actually on track based on your current audience and what you've done in the past. So if it's your first set of launch emails, I would always recommend first before you even start, this is where the planning that I talked about comes into play. I would always recommend reviewing 
your email history. So what kind of what kind of open rates are you getting now? What kind of click rates? What are your unsubscribe rates? So the whole goal behind that is to set a benchmark so that you actually know, okay, what what's right for my email list? Because mm -hmm. I can I could shoot off industry averages all day long, mm -hmm. but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be for your list. Yeah. Like somebody else might have higher rates and whatnot, but they might also email four or five times a week, whereas you're emailing twice a month. Like it's it's not really fair to judge your email list performance on and on just some random average. So yeah. get to know what yours is first. Um, and then, you know, if, if you have launched before, I would check your previous launch emails to see what kind of information you can glean from them. What are, what are those average rates? Mm -hmm. And then once you have, once you have hard numbers and data, only at that point, do I think you can accurately tell if your numbers are realistically short or not. Mm -hmm. And then if they are actually short, you kind of, you want to approach it a bit like a doctor, like figure out, okay, what, what's the thing that hurts and then go from there. So to give you an example, um, let's say if you have a low open rate, there are a few potential different causes of low open rates. So, you know, maybe your subject lines and your preview text aren't good. Maybe they need tweaking. Maybe the what's in it for me question isn't there and they're not opening it because of that. Um, maybe your list needs some segmentation and, and more specific targeting. You know, maybe maybe you've neglected your email list and, you know, they haven't heard from you in months on end and all of a sudden you're slamming them with, with sales emails. Yeah. It, might, it might not, you know, it might not be a good time. Um, you know, maybe like, I'll give you an example. I had a client who was launching a course for financial advisors, excuse me, a workshop. And what they didn't realize is that, you know, all of their audience in, in their specific industry, there was like a major, major yearly event in the middle of where they wanted to launch this workshop. Mm. So they, they ended up selling hardly anything and, you know, they didn't bring me in on the research part of it. So I, that's not something I would have been able to tell her beforehand. So getting to know your audience in that way is very, very important to make sure the timing is right. Um, another, another thing that could hurt in your email list is your click-through rates. So if people are not clicking the links that you want them to, you know, there's a couple of reason for that, reasons for that. Maybe the email copy isn't resonating with them. Maybe you need to be more specific in the benefits of what your selling is. Like maybe there's not enough call to action links, or maybe there's too many, or maybe there's conflicting ones. So like I, I, it's always recommended to have one call to action in your emails instead of having multiples. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you're not taking advantage of the, you know, the PS real estate at the bottom of your email because a lot of people like to skim. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you have to kind of see like what, what is actually the problem and then re kind of reverse engineer it and figure out what the causes could be and then tweak on it. And I, I think kind of tying back a little bit to the mindset thing, especially when you're first starting to launch, you have to kind of go into it with an experiment, experimentative mindset and almost be kind of playful with it. So you can figure out what actually works for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. There's so many, you have so many good nuggets that um, yeah. <laughs> I think people really need to pay attention. Right. And I love the idea of doing market research first. I'm a huge, huge fan of that. And in fact, um, I do that before I even launched this summit, I did market research. What do people actually want to learn about? And mm -hmm. then let me find the people that fill that need of what it is that they need. Um, yeah, like I don't do anything anymore without doing market research. So I'm really glad that you um, are going to be talking more about that at the summit um, because I think it's a missing piece that a lot of people um, are not doing. They're not asking people the right questions. They're yeah. not figuring out what problem do they have and how can you be that solution? Because yeah. then you're going to get people to actually come and do the thing that you are trying to sell, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I totally agree with that. Yeah. So let's talk about actually knowing that you're ready to launch. Like, is there a checklist? Is there like things that we need to make sure that we have done first before yeah. we're ready to launch a course or a membership or a program or whatever that is? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, you know what? I love that question. And you kind of just gave me an idea for a lead magnet. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a launch checklist girl. Like I do for real. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, like, yeah. Like how, how are you, how do you know you're ready for a launch type thing? Yeah. So, yeah. okay. So what comes to my mind immediately when asking yourself that question mm -hmm. is if you find yourself 
teaching people the same thing over and over again. Yeah. If people are asking you the same questions. You, that sounds to me like you might have a potential course there. Mm -hmm. And I think a common misconception when people think that there's a course, they immediately think, you know, it's some big, long, drawn out, like 20 module, like tear down of it, like the most in-depth dive into the topic ever. And it's going to be the best ever. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be that way. It, there's a few different kinds of courses. Like um, I, I learned a lot of what I know about courses from, um, from Amy Porterfield to be totally candid in her, in her process. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's like a, what, what does she call it? There's like a signature course. There's a, oh my God, like a hot, hot spotlight course, I think, where it's just like a very, very like quick dive into something right? It doesn't have to be, my point is, <laughs> it doesn't have to be a giant in-depth thing. You don't yeah. have to be, you don't have to be the expertiest expert in order to launch a course. You yeah. just have to be more than who you're selling to. In yes. My yeah. Yes. Um, another, another way that you might be ready to know you might be ready to launch is if you have developed your own framework. Mm -hmm. So if it's something that's, you know, easily replicable and you can teach it to somebody else, that's a potential course. Mm -hmm. Um, People have been asking you to teach it. <laughs> People asking you that question, make a course, you know, like that's another green flag. Mm -hmm. um, and, and another way you might know you're ready to launch is if you're kind of, you're, if you're getting tired of serving only like one-to-one -one clients, you want to start serving more people, like one-to-many instead of just one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. That's another green flag potentially. Mm -hmm. um, another green flag is that you know, it's something that you love doing. You love the idea of serving more than one people. You have the back end capability of serving more people at volume. Um, and not, and you don't necessarily, I'm trying to think of the best way to word this, but you don't necessarily want to just be serving one to one. You, you really have that back end system, like, and support that you need in order to help multiple people at once. So maybe, you know, maybe you have a VA on your team, maybe you have an, an assistant of some kind and who can actually help you with this. Um, the last one that comes to my mind is if you have enough um, financial security in your current business to take a little bit of a calculated risk on it. So that's, that's the biggest ones for me. Okay. Very, very cool. So <clears throat> let's talk about launching can feel overwhelming. Right. Mm -hmm. It can. Is, do you have any processes or anything that you do to make it less overwhelming for you or how you help other people make it less overwhelming? Yeah. So I, I developed, I mentioned this on our, on the call we had earlier, but it's called my unfuck your launch framework. Mm -hmm. So, um, that is kind of, I have ADHD. So if something is too complicated for me, it's not going to happen. It's as mm -hmm. simple as that. Mm -hmm. Um, so to break it down, I, I decided to break it down into phases for this framework. So phase one is doing the legwork. That's where the market research comes in, you know, interviewing people, creating, you know, your ideal buyer, that kind of thing. Um, doing competitor research. That's, that's all phase one. Uh -huh. um, and seeing, you know, if, if there's an actual market for what you're trying to sell. Um, and one, just a little extra here, it's a little fun fact that people often think that if there's another course that's kind of similar to what they want to do, that there's no market for what they have, that the opposite can be true. If there's like a successful course in what you're doing, that means that there is a market for it. You just have to be able to differentiate yourself and obviously not copy what somebody else is doing, right? Yeah. So. Just a little aside there. Um, so that's phase one is all the like work. Um, phase two, I call adapt. So this is where you're basically making all your decisions. So you want to decide, okay, what's what's going to be in this course? What's the curriculum? Um, what are my goals? What is going to be the price? Who's my target audience? What's my marketing plan? And what's the tech stack I'm going to use? So I, I call the adapt phase the decision phase. And then I like to go into um, phase three, which I call undertake. So that's where you actually start creating all of the content, right? So you start making, you know, the promotional social media content, like recording all the videos, all of that, all that good stuff. Um, and then, uh, you know, you can always decide as well here. Sorry, this should have been done in the adapt part, but you can also decide like who's going to be doing what and delegating. Mm -hmm. Um 
phase four, I like to call nitpick, but it's not really nitpicking. It's basically just tweaking and perfecting everything and making sure that it's ready to go with no, you know, glaring, obvious, horrible mistakes. Mm -hmm. Okay, then uh, phase five is configure, and that's where everything gets set up um, as far as the tech stack. So you can put it in Kajabi, you can, whatever you're doing for your tech stack, you can set up your webinar funnel, like however you're going to be doing this, like that would have all been done in the decision phase. But um, all of that to say, it just this is the part of the stage, where, uh, the, of the launch stages where you actually set everything up. And then, you know, I have to emphasize, like it's not, I don't say this to tell you that this is exactly how you need to launch it. Like it's it, launching looks different for everybody. Mm -hmm. But the, the point is of this is to make sure that you're, you know, you're making these decisions ahead of time and then just following through on them. Cause a lot of times the decision-making is the hardest part. Yeah. Yeah. And then just decide Yeah, to just decide. So Absolutely. and testing as well in, in this, in this phase. And then there's, yeah. there's one more after. Okay. Yeah. Uh, phase um, phase six is called hold on. And I call that, you know, this is where you kind of sit, sit back and watch everything come to life. This is where everything is live. You're starting to make sales ideally, but then you want to make sure that you keep track of all your metrics and your conversions You figure out, okay, what needs to be optimized for future launches? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. launching is, I, I don't think that launching is something that should be ever done once. You want to make sure that you you create something and do all the work for something you're going to use over and over again. I, I would hate to see somebody in their business try and reinvent the wheel and do a new product every single time. <laughs> rinse and repeat, baby. That's yeah, what I'm yeah. all about. Yep. Rinse and repeat. Yeah. So those are my phases. That's kind of my process and how I do it. And the offers that I make for my clients have been kind of built around that concept. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Thank you. So what can people expect to hear from you at the summit? So you've provided, we're going to do a five minute talk, and then you've also provided um, some pre-recorded content for our VIP guests. So can you tell us a little bit more about what you are going to be chatting about? Yeah. So um, for the five minute talk, um, I'm basically going to just be doing some tips on how to do the market research phase properly. Um you know, if you, cause if you're putting the cart before the horse, often at times it's not going to work. <laughs> so doing the research properly is kind of where I sort of shine in this area. And then, um, for my in-depth, um, presentation, sorry, <laughs> uh, I'm doing like a more like in-depth version of how to do that properly. Yeah. So, um, I think one of my favorite tidbits of that particular speech uh, speech. Oh my goodness. That's not the right <laughs> word. <laughs> presentation. Presentation is like, just, I, I kind of dive into exactly, you know, how many interviews I think that you should do with prospective clients, like the three, the three tiers of, I'm sorry, the three areas of research that you should do. Um, and one of them is the competitor analysis. So I kind of tell you like exactly like how, how to go about figuring out what you need to know from your competitors. And also like, um, in, like in-person interview research and just online digging for kind of gold and what, what kind of voice of client research data you should be using and that kind of stuff. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Well, if you have not yet gotten your tickets to the Elevate Your Coaching Summit um, business summit, you are missing out. You're going to be missing out. So you can stream this live on YouTube for free, or you can upgrade for $47 and participate in the summit where you'll get to connect with um, our panelists like Grace and 35 other amazing speakers and presenters. So be sure to get your tickets at elevateyourcoachingsummit.com and we'll see you guys at the summit. Thanks Grace I'm, I'm, for joining us. Bye. <laughs>